comedian, published author, public speaker, radio host, minister, and cancer's ass kicker. She's also been my friend for 20 years. Feel free to personalize this intro. <laughs> Doctor said, 
what? And then I said, how is this even possible? My tits are so small. And she said, um, you need to clear your schedule and come meet with a surgeon right now. So I got a lumpectomy. I named my tumor Igor, and I sent out an announcement to my friends saying I gave birth to Igor via C-section. Yay! <laughs> I researched radiation and chemo and decided it wasn't for me. I tried different Eastern and alternative treatments. I changed my nutrition. I slept more. I slowed down. And I thought I had left the cancer behind for good. But a year later, another lung appeared. What the fuck? <laughs> this time I chose not to even get surgery. I began meditating and doing yoga and qigong. And I tried about 50 different Eastern and alternative treatments, even some illegal ones. I traveled the world and spent my life savings and went $500,000 into debt looking for a cure. Wow. While many of these things made me feel good and did improve my overall health, none of them cured me of cancer. The tumor had grown to be the size of a grapefruit. Oh, yummy. I don't eat grapefruit anymore. <laughs> By the way, why do people use grapefruit as a size indicator for tumors, really? Something that you eat? Anyway, I basically had three tits like that woman in Total Recall. <laughs> I walked around with this giant tumor sticking out of my chest for about six months not telling anyone, and always wearing something loose enough so that no one would notice, and avoiding close hugs. So I had another lumpectomy in 2009. The surgery site got infected and opened up, leaving a large crater in my tit. Yeah, that's it. That's the crater. It sort of looks like a yin-yang, doesn't it? The crater was convenient because it also doubled as a change purse. <laughs> oh my god, someone snorted. <laughs> so, I regrew some of my left breast tissue with a revolutionary new technology called ECM, extracellular matrix powder, and it worked. Those like wow. up areas, that's actually new tissue. I grew, I regrew new tissue and skin that has its own blood vessels. It's sort of like the new 3D printers. Have you heard of that? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had known about this technology when I was a teenager. Even before the cancer, my bra size was 34 double A, which stands for Asian American. <laughs> <laughs> I decided that my sitcom should be called One and a Half Tits. <laughs> I smell Emmy. <laughs> then on Valentine's Day this year, I was with Eric and his parents, and his mom gave me a great big hug, which fractured my T10 vertebra. She did not mean to hurt me, right, Claudia? You love me, right? <laughs> Koreans and Jews are like this, I'm telling you. So I went to the hospital in an ambulance in excruciating pain. The doctor said, I can do a kyphoplasty that will fix your back and take away your pain. I said, yes. Suddenly my bias against Western medicine went out the window. It's amazing how excruciating pain can change one's decision-making process. I don't care if you have to cut the heads off of endangered species and stick them in there. Do it. <laughs> As I was recovering, I found out that the cancer had metastasized to my bones, my lymph nodes, and both breasts. Fuck. The doctors recommended radiation on my back because if left untreated, I could become paralyzed. So I said, sure, what time can we start? I also <laughs> needed hip replacement surgery. Oh. So in the past six months, I have had two surgeries, six weeks of radiation, and 12 weeks of chemo. As I said, I am an overachiever. <laughs> I remember being in the hospital recovering from hip surgery, and on the television in my hospital room was the breaking news about the earthquake in Japan. So I remember thinking to myself, earthquake, tsunami, 
radiation on the way. Awesome. I don't have to go to my treatments anymore. I'll go home. <laughs> 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 oh, <my God. laughs> oh my God, this is hysterical. So, I have a question. If radiation causes cancer, how can it be the cure? Should I start smoking cigarettes too? <laughs> the chemotherapy I took is a single agent oral chemotherapy called Zolota, which is known to reverse cancer in the bones. I'm told it's perfectly safe. And yet the instructions say to be sure to wear your safety goggles and rubber gloves when handling the pills. Oh my God. So wait, you don't want me to let the pills touch my skin or get anywhere near my eyes, but you want me to eat them? <laughs> and by the way, why am I wearing safety goggles? Do you think I'm gonna aim for my mouth and uh oh, uh -oh, oh my god! Oh I'm so cute! Put that safety goggles on. <laughs> worst things about having cancer is the stupid shit people say to you. Someone said to me, you wouldn't have cancer if you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Ah, oh, boo. This is why people hate Christians. <laughs> also, everyone wants me to fight the cancer. Fight the cancer, Suzanne. Just fight it. Make sure you fight it. Fight the good fight. Well, George Carlin said, Fighting for peace is like fucking for virginity. <laughs> <laughs> Einstein said problems cannot be solved by the same energy that created them. Mother Teresa said she would not attend an anti-war rally, but would happily attend a pro-peace rally. Whatever you resist persists. So instead of fighting, I am releasing the cancer. I am embracing my health. I am basking in the present moment. I'm receiving lots of love. I am overflowing with gratitude. I am laughing, and I'm having the best sex of my life. and they say, Suzanne, you look so beautiful. I say, it's the cancer. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! My beauty secret, you should get some. Yeah. It's the radiation, I'm glowing. Yeah. <laughs> they also can't help staring at my breasts even when they try not to. I'm thinking, you can't see it. They're like, hi, Suzanne, how, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm feeling good today. I healed quickly from both surgeries. I made it through the radiation. I have had no significant side effects from the chemo. My tumor marker number is down by 40 points from 75 to 34. Woo! Yeah! Yes! And 39 is the healthy range. My latest PET CT scan showed I have no new lumps and the lump in my right breast has vanished. Yeah! armpit have either shrunk or disappeared, and the bone scan shows no new lesions, and the lesion on my skull has also disappeared. Yeah! Woo! So, you know that expression, we are only as sick as our secrets? Mm -hmm. Well, since revealing my secret, my health has improved miraculously. Um, yeah. By the way, these are what my tits look like now. <laughs> yeah! Or had cancer? Yay! Oh, okay. Those of you who didn't raise your hands but have or had it, I get it. It is still a taboo topic, thank you for your honesty, even now in 2011, and it's not even oh, contagious. Okay. In Asian culture, it's considered bad taste to air your dirty laundry in public or talk about your problems or admit that anything's going wrong. We're supposed to be stoic. Stiff upper lip like the British. Oh no, everything fine. <laughs> everything perfect. No, no, don't worry. Okay. In Korea, when a patient is diagnosed with cancer, the topic is so taboo that the doctors don't tell the patients. Oh, wow. Cancer is considered a death sentence. So the doctors lie to the patients and say it's another disease that's more treatable in order to not worry the patients. 
Then they give them the treatments for the cancer, but they pretend it's for the fake disease. I shit you not. <laughs> wow. You rarely see Asians in 12-step meetings or support group meetings or even in therapy because we'd be admitting we have problems and that we need help. Through this journey, I've learned to really stop and ask for help and to receive it. I've learned to... I've learned to let all the love in. And it was really hard and overwhelming at first because I was always the superwoman and the rescuer and the mentor and the teacher and the healer and the fixer for other people in my life. And I was always the, no, I got it, I'm fine, girl. My house used to be a private sanctuary and I never wanted anyone to come over. And it became Grand Central Love Station. I found out that everyone who I thought was my friend is. Yes. Wow. Who gets to find that out? Woo. When something like this happens, you find out what you're really made of, and you find out what the people around you are really made of. There have been amazing fundraisers like this thrown for me because the crisis wiped me out financially, and I get to feel like Jimmy Stewart at the end of It's a Wonderful Life. Aww. People come over to my house and tell me how much they love me and how much I mean to them. It's like I'm at my own funeral, and I get to hear all these great eulogies while I'm still alive. <laughs> and feel sad because I'd remember that I have cancer. Now I wake up happy because I remember who I really am. I plan to outlive every oncologist who told me I'm going to be dead soon. Yeah!